Hi ladies and gentlemen, it's Steve here with Steve's Hardware. Today we're going to take a look at Gigabyte's X670 Aorus Elite AX. Uh, it's, you can tell by the namesake, the motherboard definitely has wireless AX. It's part of the X670 chipset family from Gigabyte. It does actually support um, PCI 5.0, DDR5, as well as a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, and of course wireless AX. It has a lot of stuff and there's a lot to cover so let's get started the motherboard comes in anti-static packaging you see how perfect it is that's because I haven't gotten my hands on it yet so we're gonna put that aside oh, some weight to that thing okay here we got some Wi-Fi antenna we got a G connector now this motherboard has some pretty cool features on it but accessories if that's what you're looking for then um, you might want to get like a X670E motherboard because those come with a lot more accessories. Uh, two SATA cables and some M.2 standoffs. And I believe that is uh, it. And that's not bad. Oh, uh, also, <laughs> if you're buying this, you're going to get a manual uh, if you buy it in a store. And if not, the manual is available online. You don't have to print it like I did. Um, and I only printed part of it, too. Anyway, so you have all the accessories. I believe this is called the SMA connector. So one of these is right angle, G connector makes it easy to get everything together you have your M.2 standoffs so moving along here's the motherboard in its anti-static packaging um, so let's take it out make sure we're properly grounded because these motherboards are not exactly cheap X670 motherboards, because of the PCI 4.0, the DDR5, and the PCI 5.0, you have to use a certain quality of a PCB. And you gotta use certain slots, everything has to be like SMT, or SMT, or SMT for the most part. Anyway, so here we go. Oh, is this cool? So this must be that connector. Cool. Okay, so here's the motherboard. We have all the VRMs covered up. You have PCIe. Um, so the PCIe here, this is a PCIe by 16 slot. Now this slot is actually a PCIe by 16 PCIe 4.0. Only the XE or X670E versions are required to have PCIe 5.0 in this first slot. This is PCIe 4.0 from the same controller in the CPU, but um, this is a. Uh, I mean, you're not going to really see much of a performance difference because even right now, nothing really saturates PCIe 4.0 other than storage devices, which will go in the four M.2 slots on this motherboard, I believe. Um, so yeah, we do have an M.2 slot here, and this M.2 slot is supposed to be uh, PCI 5.0 though. So Gigabyte did give you some PCI 5.0, but in storage, because that's really where it matters. And then you have two slots here. This one is a PCIe uh, 4.0 by 4, okay? And this one is a PCIe 3.0 by 2. So 1642, there's no switching of bandwidth at all. PCIe 3, PCIe 4, PCIe 4, and then M.2, PCIe 5, and the other M.2s down here are PCIe. Uh. All right, so let's take a look at the motherboard from more of like a macro viewpoint when it comes to the voltage regulators. The voltage regulators on this motherboard are 16 phases for the CPU, uh, two phases for the SOC, and then two phases for the Mystic. Now the uh, miscellaneous, sorry, I always keep saying that. Um, uh, the miscellaneous basically drives stuff like the PCIe, uh, PCIe controller outputs. Um, so yeah, you got those. But here's the interesting part: the 16 phase VRM. Uh, first off, it's an 8 plus 8 design, which is uh, basically some call it twin. It's basically um, 8 PWM phases going out to 16 power stages. No doublers or anything like that. Um, so you have 8 PWM phases and then each PWM phase goes to 2 power stages. In this case the power stages are rated I believe I believe they're rated 70 amps for the CPU. Okay, And then for the um, SOC it's 60 amps and then 90 amps for the miscellaneous. So I just wanted to go over that. We will take a look at the numbers and everything to see what's what. But that seems like an interesting configuration. Um, but overall, yeah, so now let's take a look at the motherboard a little bit closer. Take a look at the rear I.O. panel. And so the rear I.O. panel, you have a Q Flash Plus button, first of all. And the Q Flash Plus button also has a little accompanying LED right behind the I.O. shield. So you'll see it light up red. 
uh, if that's happening, if it's working. So basically, you take a USB stick, you take a, you download the BIOS for this motherboard if you want to use this method. And this is kind of a backup method, so it's kind of more of a last resort than a first type thing. And um, you basically rename that BIOS to uh, gigabyte.bin, and you put it on the USB stick, to put in the right port, hit the button, and it'll automatically flash the BIOS ROM on this motherboard, which in this case is a single BIOS ROM. So this is a really handy tool to have for recovery reasons. Next up next to that, you have uh, two Wi-Fi antenna. Um, I believe they connect to a uh, actually an AMD Wi-Fi uh, AX, wireless AX. It goes all the way up to wireless AX and 160 megahertz. Next to that, we have an HDMI uh, port. Now, uh, it supports everything uh, that the CPU's integrated graphics does from the IOD and the CPU, the IO die. Um, so basically, that depends on what kind of model CPU you have, but it's uh, at minimum HDMI 2.0. So uh, next to that, you have four USB 2.0 ports. They're black. And um, this is just like kind of your traditional USB 2.0 ports. And um, next to those, any blue port you see on the back here, it says uh, USB 3.2 next to it. Those are USB 3.2 uh, Gen 1 ports. So they're rated uh, 5 gigabits per second. Uh, the red ports you see, those, uh, those red ports, I believe there are a few of them. Those red ports, they, uh, they're USB 3.2 Gen 2, which means that they're 10 gigabits per second. Okay, And then you also have that Type-C connector right there. That Type-C connector is actually a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 which means it's 20 gigabits per second. It's one of two Type-C uh, outputs on this motherboard. One is an internal Type-C header and the other one is on the rear I.O. so you can see that. Then you have your uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN. Um, I believe it's from Realtek controller. And uh, you have your three audio outputs uh, here. So you got that. And um, yeah, so we got that rear I.O. Uh, we can continue moving along. Here we have our audio, um, just a codec here, some nice capacitors, some uh, basically uh, isolation on the motherboard. Here we have a bunch of headers. Um, you got your <laughs> front panel audio headers, you have your uh, RGB LED, addressable RGB. Uh, you have some specific header here that is actually not mentioned in the manual and you also have a, a trusted platform module header here. But uh, here is a fan header. There are a few fan headers on this motherboard. I believe there are five of them. Or four of them. No, five of them. Um, and uh, the system fan headers here. This is also a system fan header. And all of the fan headers on this motherboard we're going to see support up to two amps. And they're all hybrid. So they can all be set to be DC mode, which is like a three pin. Um, that controls the voltage. Or they can be set to PWM mode, where the fourth pin, that's that was added to the specification, that can actually control the speed. So it's given a constant voltage and then the PWM uh, tells the motor uh, what to do. So you got those two <laughs> control modes. Um, and uh, here we got two USB 2.0 ports. Here we have uh, basically a USB 3.0 internal header. Okay, and then we have another USB 3.0 internal header. Both of these headers, they well, it, it's been rebranded, but USB 3.0 is now USB 3.2 Gen 1. So all those blue ports you saw in the back, those are basically these. So there's two of these for a total of four outputs. You have front panel headers. You have a clear CMOS button here right next to a clear CMOS header. Um, yeah, that's kind of handy. You have four SATA ports here. Okay. So you got four. You have a Thunderbolt um, GPIO header here. Um, this Thunderbolt header is for an add-in card, specifically Gigabyte does mention some kind of Gigabyte add-in card, which, uh, I mean, it would probably be Thunderbolt, which is cool, which means that they got Thunderbolt coming. Plus, I mean, it's it's labeled TB, THB. I mean, what is that other than Thunderbolt? It actually, I think in the future, Thunderbolt's being rebranded into USB 4.0. It's basically the same thing as Thunderbolt. Uh, I believe Intel opened up the Thunderbolt specifications and thus comes 40 gigabits per second. Thunderbolt goes to 40 gigabits per second USB 4, which is cool. Anyways, um, another system fan header. This is your Type-C internal header. Now, this Type-C header is USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. So this is also 20 gigabits per second. Um, this is just a header for connecting the card, okay? You're not getting any bandwidth out of that thing. You are getting 20 gigabits out of this, but this is just to make that uh, adding card work um, for Thunderbolt. Here we have an interesting thing. We have... Uh, 
we have a power button up here and then we have a reset button right here but then here's here's my favorite part they actually put a jumper for the reset button right here and there's a reason for this uh, the reset button on this motherboard actually can become a smart switch uh, you can set this up in the BIOS but you can you can remap the reset button to be either a reset button or a safe boot button or a change RGB button um, and I believe there's one more function but yeah you can you can change you can change what this does uh, and I mean don't forget though you still have your reset headers like here in your front panel headers so nothing has changed in that regard um, uh, front panel headers <laughs> okay so you have all that oh and here's the interesting thing okay so this is uh, called CPU RGB and I believe this was put in there because Basically, some of AMD's stock coolers, they uh, have RGBs built into them, and they have an RGB output, or they want to go somewhere, so I think that's why Gigabyte added this here. Right next to it is a is a 4-pin, yeah. So, these are two normal RGB headers. This one's just called CPU Fan RGB, or CPU RGB. It's basically an RGB header. You can look at the pin out, they're identical. And then here you have a uh, addressable RGB header, okay? So, 3-pin. So, you have a total of three RGB LED headers, and then you have two addressable headers on this motherboard. Here you have a pump fan header, okay? And then here you have a CPU fan header. So, you have a total of five fan headers on this motherboard, all pre-hybrid. Uh, and then here you got your VRM. On this very uh, cost-effective motherboard, you get <laughs> two 8-pin power um, connectors. And that's because at default, the like 7950X, which this has to support, and which this VRM is designed to easily support 170 watt TDP, that CPU can go upwards of almost 300 watts, and these connectors are only supposed to take 300 watts. So, they put two of them in. Now, Granted, I've seen these connectors go way over 300 watts. It depends on how sturdy they are, how they're built, but most X670 motherboards will have two, and this one does too. Um, yeah, I don't know there's much to say other than uh, when we were talking about these M.2 slots, let's just go over this real quick again. 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes from the CPU. Four PCIe 5.0 lanes on this M.2 slot from the CPU. Okay, this is four PCIe 4.0 lanes from the CPU. So 16 plus four plus four is what? 24, and then the other four goes here. So this is all 28 lanes have been used, okay? 5.0 to PCIe 4.0 here, or PCIe 5.0 by four to this M.2 slot right here, and then PCIe 4.0 by 16 to here, and then PCIe 4.0 by 16 here, or by, by four here, there is no there's no sharing of the lanes, okay? These two are also PCI 4.0 by 4 slots, okay? But these two come from chipset, okay? Or the chipsets. So 1 and 2, chipset, CPU, CPU, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 5.0, okay? This is also 4.0. This is from the chipset. And um, this is by 4, 4.0. And this is by 2, 3.0. These are both from a chipset as well. They also don't switch. Some of these USB have hubs, but other than that, nothing switches bandwidth here on this motherboard, which makes it really easy to work with. And I mean, this is a block diagram from the manual. Okay, there's no switches here. There's some hubs and stuff, and uh, I printed out the whole entire, well, most of the manual, so I just ripped this one out just to show you guys. You can look this up on the internet. It's under the motherboard's uh, support section. It's on page five, okay? So if you wanna know how it's laid out and what bandwidth goes where, this will, this will help you out a lot. All right, so back of the motherboard. I actually haven't looked at the back yet. Not really too much to see, although this is a uh, high quality PCB. We can see that these are SMD. I, I haven't seen any DDR5 without being SMD, SMT. Um, and then you can see this PCI 4.0 is, um, this PCI 4.0 is basically, uh, it's, it's put into the motherboard, so it's through hole instead of SMT. And I'm pretty sure that's why those two, it might be why those two Mystic uh, or miscellaneous power stages are worth 90 amps because they basically power the PCI signal um, to the slots. They don't like power the slot, but they power the signaling from the CPU. So advances have allowed PCI 4.0 to be through hole. And here too, which is impressive. Anyways. Well, actually, this is coming from the chipset, so that doesn't really matter, but that's that. So, this motherboard's nice. We have the rear I.O. integrated. The heat sinks are nice. The next step is to pull everything apart and break everything down for you.
All right. So thank you for watching, and uh, part two will be here soon. All right. Thanks.